So we're putting together our Greek orzo salad with Italian tuna. And what we are going to do for our picnic is uh, pack it in this glass jar, which is actually a canning container. I selected it because, first of all, you can see the beautiful layers of the salad through the glass, and also we can eat right out of this container, and then when we are ready to go home, we just snap it shut and then no more cleanup. We're gonna start with uh, making the dressing for this mixture, which is a 15 and a half ounce can of garbanzo beans, um, a whole tomato chopped, and about two tablespoons, maybe three tablespoons of Italian parsley. So this is a very, very simple vinaigrette that we're doing here, and we're going to start with uh, about a third cup of chives. And this is a quarter cup of um, white wine vinegar. You could use champagne vinegar. And this is a small chopped shallot. Okay, one teaspoon of honey and one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Okay, and then this is one third cup of olive oil and two thirds cup of just vegetable oil. And I think that the vegetable oil just keeps it a little lighter. And we're using a stick blender, so I'm going to just go ahead and dump the whole thing in. So we just put it in here. This will take just a few minutes. But as you can see, I mean, this will stay together. It's not going to separate, and that's why I like using a stick blender for my, my dressing. Salt and pepper. And we'll give that another run with the stick blender and see if it needs more. Well, that's just beautiful. Okay. Mm. Absolutely perfect. Okay, then what we're going to do is just take a spoonful or two of this and mix it in with our garbanzo beans. We'll keep the rest of that around because we want, may want to drizzle some over the top of our salad when it's done. Okay, this gets to marinate for about 15 to 20 minutes, and we are going to move on to our next step, which is to put together our orzo. Our garbanzo beans are marinating in our dressing, and now we're going to move on to our orzo. This is about three quarters of a cup of orzo uncooked, so maybe a cup and a half cooked, and this is the base for our pasta. Orzo is a Greek pasta, by the way. It's sort of shaped like rice. We're adding a half a cup of chopped cucumber to this. This is red onion, thinly sliced. Say. Then we're going to grate some lemon. Oops, there we go. You just don't want to go too far into the pith. You just want the very outside of it. And we're going to keep going until we get a oh, teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of that. Okay, so then same lemon, cut it in half. Give it a little squeeze. This is extra virgin, naturally. About a tablespoon of that or so. Oregano chopped, about a tablespoon and a half. And I'm going to stir this up. And add a little salt. And of course a little pepper. We'll start our layering with our garbanzo bean mixture that has been marinating. And I'll put a nice couple of scoops in each one. There we go. Love it. It's gorgeous. I'm going to make sure I get some tomato in there. Okay, perfect. Then, this layer is uh, torn romaine lettuce. That gives a nice little layer of green. And I'm just going to spoon a little bit of our dressing that went onto the garbanzo beans on top of the romaine, just to give it a little more flavor and tie it together. Then, the orzo. Again, the lemon in this is going to just contrast so nicely with that, with that white wine vinaigrette. Now, the tuna. This is Italian tuna. This brand is called Tonino. Um, the word tono means tuna in Italian. Okay, so I will put some of that in there. It, by the way, comes in almost fillets, so I took it and broke it apart. It looked kind of almost like fish sticks. It was um, really different packaging. Okay, a little tuna on the top. And then... Because this is Greek, we've got some feta. Oh, yum. This is just great looking. Okay. 
This is what makes it ever so special. I just love putting this in here. It's fresh mint, and I'm just going to tear that in a little chiffonade over the top. These can keep in your fridge for up to six hours, probably eight hours, or you can eat them right away. I'm going to put mine in my fridge, and we are going to move on to making our spring pea soup. Which so is we're starting with our leeks for our spring pea soup. Now, I wanted to chop a few of these in front of you. First of all, notice that we're using the white part. The green stem is stocky and um, not tender and would not work in this. So just chop these up quickly. And you don't, it can be rough because we're gonna blend this whole thing later. And then I also wanted to show you that leeks come apart in these little pieces and this is a great place for dirt to get trapped, especially if you buy these at the farmer's market because they probably haven't been rinsed at all. These I got at the grocery store and were, but I still had to rinse dirt out in between these little pieces here. So I'll just quickly chop that up. And what I've got going on in the stove is I have a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter heating up so I can saute these a little bit. Now, I do not want to brown these. I just want to saute them for seven to 10 minutes until they're really translucent and wilted. And I'm going to add, this is a small head of bib lettuce that I've torn up. Yes. A quarter cup of Italian parsley. And all I'm trying to accomplish here is to get this to wilt. It'll take just a minute. Um, the combination of peas and lettuce is really common in France. Also, cooking lettuce, lettuces, grilling lettuces is common in Fran France and Italy. Not so common here. But what this does to this soup is makes it extremely fresh. It's so different, so different than a, uh, you know, a, a pea soup that's made with ham and that's perfect. Now what I want to do is add my, I'm using frozen peas. Of course, you can use fresh peas. Okay. And then this is two cups of homemade chicken stock. Okay, so this we get up to a simmer and we're gonna let this go for about 10 minutes and then we'll finish it off. So our spring pea soup has been simmering for about 10 minutes and I'm ready to take it off. And you can see it is steaming hot. So I'm gonna finish this off with just a little bit of cream, which you don't have to do. Um, I like the richness of it, but if you want to keep it low fat, or you could go with the option of doing half and half. Okay, gorgeous. A little salt. And a little pepper. And some cream. This is about a quarter cup. Again, not necessary, but really helps to finish it off. Sometimes I serve this... Uh, with a dollop of mascarpone cheese in the center of it if it's hot. And this I'm going to actually serve chilled. And this is the, this is the jar that we are going to package, in, package it in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this sit out for a while and cool down so it's cool enough so that I can pour it into this bowl. Then I'll cover it and chill it further. So when we're ready to go on the picnic, we'll be able to take the soup and put it right into the jars and into the backpack. I'm finishing ladling our soup into its jars, our chilled spring pea soup. And as you can see, I've got everything out that is going in the pack. Just get rid of this. So what we have here is our Greek orzo salads and our chilled spring soup, pea soup. And then to start with, I've got a little uh, crunchy bread with some brie, and for dessert I found these darling little miniature cupcakes at a place called Cupcake here in town, and they make them in all different flavors. These just happen to be a um, chocolate mint, and this is a cookie cream. I also made some lemonade to take along. So I'm gonna put these in a jar as well. Close it up here, and I'm ready to go find my Vespa.